It is almost Halloween and what better way to celebrate it than with some nice spooky photo composition. But before I show you how I created this edit, I want to show you what assets I have actually used. And well, I've just created the I am Rancy Halloween brushes. I just finished the pack so they are brand 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 new and I just want to show you around a bit in this pack. Now this pack is available for one dollar but if you appreciate what I'm doing you can pay whatever you want. On the left side here you see all the brushes that are inside of the I'm Rancy Halloween brushes. So at the top you see three jack-o-lanterns then you see two pumpkins that you can use to plant the faces on then you see some fire if you want to spice it up a little bit there's spider webs there's ghosts there's some scary silhouette then we've got a couple of tombstones a dead tree a raven then a witch hat a witch broom a blood moon two skulls a bed swarm some single beds and then some spiders that come with the spider web now how these brushes work you simply want to create a new layer every time you use your brushes and let's start with a jack-o-lantern so let's maybe use the second pumpkin and then press b on the keyboard to select your brush tool now what you want to do is you want to make sure that the full brush is inside of the screen so you don't want it to be cut off let's say because if i click right now and i'm going to use it with my move tool you can see that it is actually cut off so what you want to do is press b position it in the middle of your screen and then use the move tool by pressing v on the keyboard to position it and if i cross it uh, outside of the screen now and then get it back you can see that we still got our pumpkin in place what i want to do now is apply one of these faces so i'm going to create a new pixel layer i'm going to grab either one of the faces so let's go for the first one let's press b on the keyboard and now with my bracket keys i'm going to reduce the size of my brush and basically just gonna stamp it in now I can click right now and because I put it on its separate layer I can use the move tool once again to reposition it however I like. So if I want to turn it around a little bit I can totally do that. So that is how easy it is to create uh, a jack-o-lantern. Now if I want to try some other faces I can. I'm just going to create a new layer. Press B on the keyboard to select my brush layer and then I'm going to click once. I'm going to use my move tool to position it and boom I've got another jack-o-lantern. Now of course as mentioned there's two pumpkins so you can try out this with both pumpkins or you can make a picture of your own pumpkin if you want to and carve out in just a click. Now of course the uh, pumpkin isn't positioned very well in the grass and that is because we would need some grass mask so let me just show you quickly how it's done. You create a layer mask and in the I'm Rancy nature brush pack or any other brush pack that you find with grass brushes you can uh, use grass brushes to mask out the bottom of your subject let's say. So this is basically only to position it in the grass but anyway i'm gonna leave it for now i think i'm pretty happy and let's actually see what else we've got there we've got some realistic fire so let's say we want to create make this thing very crazy and set it on fire we can if we wanted to just like this we've got some spider webs which are very very nice we've got this spider web right here we've got this spider web this spider web right here and We've got this corner spider web and actually most of these spider webs are extracted from real photos. There's two that I actually made myself but the other ones are actually extracted from real photos. Now with the spider webs you actually have sp some spiders to accompany with it. So at the very bottom of the bu uh, brush pack you've got spider number one. Let's move it right here. So there's spider number one. Then there's spider number two which is more like a tarantula. Then there's spider number three which is basically the spider-man spider kind of and then there's spider uh, spider number four they're not realistic but they really sell the effect if you small if you make them very small because now obviously i made this spider web very very big so then we've got a couple of ghosts um, so two with eyes one without eyes and of course you can decrease the opacity a little bit to actually make them look like ghosts so these are pretty nice then we've got this silhouette doesn't really work here of course but if you have a window or something this works very very nice then i've got a couple of tombstones so this one and the quality as you can see is very high so they're very high resolution this one this one is more cartoony if you have some nice invitation or poster that you want to make and then there's this one so then we've got a dead tree 
which um, also fits the theme of course including a raven so you can put the raven somewhere inside of the tree if you want to so maybe right here uh, which looks very nice then I've got a witch hat, also more cartoony style. Then there's this broom, because obviously a witch needs her broom. Then we've got a blood moon. We've got some skulls, which are also very, very high quality. So I'm actually reducing the size. This one is more a fake skull, let's say. The other one is more realistic. Then there's this nice bed swarm. Then there's a couple of singular beds if you want to, use, to add some more. And these are also more cartoony, so not super realistic. And then we've got the spiders as mentioned. So this is the I'm Rancy Halloween brush pack, brand new. You can grab it for one euro or pay whatever you like if you love what I'm doing for the Affinity Photo community. Now let me show you how I created this edit. It's gonna be a speed edit, but let me show you. Now, this edit I started off by reducing the exposure, add in some blues and reduce the saturation to create some nice moody vibes. Then to make this image look more interesting, I decided to turn on the lights inside of the little house by using a fill layer and some simple masking. This is a very cool technique, so if you want to know how this is done, please let me know down below in the comments. Then I set the blend mode to add and I decided to add some light rays so that it actually looks like there's some light coming from the inside. I used the depth of field blur to kind of diffuse the light and then I used a mask, a gradient mask to so to say, to make it look more realistic. Once I was happy, I simply copied it to the other window, reshaped it a little bit and then I was happy with my lights. Then it was time to add the first Halloween element which became a jack-o'-lantern. So I grabbed this pumpkin right over here and just smashed this face on it and position it right next to the path. I did the exact same technique that I showed you before by using a grass brush of the I'm Rancy Nature brush pack to position it in the grass. Then I decided to add some slight shadow to make it more realistic. And then I tweaked the colors and the exposure a little bit to match it with the surroundings. To get the same diffused light effect as for the windows, I simply copied the effect and placed it on top of the eyes of the Jack O' Lantern. After some simple tweaking, I was pretty happy with the result. Then I decided to add some foreground element to create some depth in my composition, which became this tombstone. I did the exact same color grading by using a white balance layer, a vibrant adjustment layer and an exposure adjustment layer to match it with the surroundings. And of course added some Gaussian blur to make it look like a foreground object. Then it was time for another element which became this raven or crow. I first positioned this on the tombstone but later I decided to move its position. After repeating the same color corrections over and over again, I decided to add some slight shadow so that it actually looked like it was standing on the tombstone. Once I was happy with the shadow and how it looked, I tried adding the blood moon to the background. And you heard that right, I tried. And I tried pretty hard, but I just couldn't find a way to make it fit in this scene. So in the end, I decided to ditch the moon altogether and go for some other elements. Now, before adding some ghosts to this composition, I decided to add another foreground element, which became this dead tree. The new house for our crow. Same thing, I lowered the exposure, I added some blue tones, I reduced the uh, vibrance and the saturation, and then I added some Gaussian blur to make it look like an actual foreground element. And then my crow or raven had his new nice home. Of course, I also had to import or transfer the shadow from the tombstone to the tree. 
After my failed attempt to add the blood moon to the sky, which I solved later by adding another moon, I wanted to add something else to the sky, which became this bat swarm. And with the eraser tool, I simply removed some bats to make it look like how I wanted. Now it was time to add another element, which became this skull. And first I wanted to position it next to the bench, but then I positioned it left of the path. Now, same thing again, I lowered the exposure and the vibrance, I added some blue tones, and then I used my grass masking technique once again to position and place the skull nicely and neat in the grass. Also for this skull, I added some slight shadow to make it actually look like it was laying in the grass, and I was happy with the result. Then I found out that the beds were way too big, so I basically made them smaller and actually duplicated and flipped them so we had a bigger swarm. Alright, time for some spider webs and add a little spider. So I decided to grab this spider web right here and position it here in between the three branches. Of course, after blurring the spider web, you barely even see it, but you know, it's all in the details. Then I added another spider web, which became this uh, corner spider web, let's say, and placed it right here. And ultimately, I decided to add another animal, which became this little spider, which I positioned in the first web that I placed. And as mentioned before, a spider in perspective, like as big as it should be, it looks very good. All right, ghosty time. I positioned the ghost right here and after some color grading I decided to add a slight shadow underneath the ghost so that it actually looks like it's floating. I decided to reposition it to the right side but I found later on that it was kind of out of balance the image so I positioned it back to the left of the path. Then I turned my focus back to the sky so I made a nice selection of the sky in order to improve it, so I wanted to add some clouds and I wanted to try to add the blood moon once again. First I enhanced the sky with the I Am Rancy cloud brushes, which are available in the ultimate photo manipulation brush bundle. And after making some more distinct clouds, I decided to try again to add the blood moon. Now honestly this blood moon works perfectly if you have a super super dark sky, however somehow I couldn't make it work in this picture how hard I tried. And well that is the thing, sometimes you have these moments with photo manipulation and you just have to figure out another way to make it work. So as you'll see in the end result I decided to go for another moon. All in all, this edit took me about one, one and a half hour and after some final tweaking, here is the end result. 3, 2, 1. Thank you so much for watching and if you're interested in the I'm Rancy Halloween brush pack, then check out the link below. It's just one euro or pay whatever you want. See you in the next one. Cheers.